Hello, and welcome to the 2011 Terrapin Sp Winter Spring Competitive Clinic Program. My name is Paul Stafford. I'm the head coach of the Terrapin Swim Team. Over the next several weeks, we will be producing and posting uh, several videos that will introduce and demonstrate the skills and drills that will be part of our instruction uh, in the upcoming clinic program. All participants are encouraged to watch the videos the week prior to the clinics so you kind of get a head start on what we're going to be working on for that week. The videos can be found on YouTube at the Terrapin Videos account, or you can also find the link on the Terrapin webpage at www.terrapinswim.com. We look forward to working with you over the next several weeks and enjoy the video. When building proper technique for the four competitive strokes, we follow a four-step teaching progression. We will have, we will develop or we will demonstrate a few drills that emphasize each of those steps. Step number one is always body position and kick mechanics. In relation to body position, basically your body is a boat in the water. You want to make your body the most efficient boat possible, which means that you want to have a long, thin boat as opposed to a short, stubby boat. You want to ride on top of the water and you want to move in a straight line. Step number two is balance and leverage. And balance and leverage comes from the middle of your body, using your core muscles. And the long axis strokes of free and back, that's this movement, the rotation of your body uh, along the long axis. And the short axis strokes of breast and fly, it's the alternating press of the chest, press of the hips, press of the chest, press of the hips, to create that balance and leverage and power in your stroke. Step number three is timing. And the goal of timing is to create fluidity of movement, to create a stroke that flows. If you think about any animal that's made to move through the water, all their movements are flowing graceful movements. So that's the, that is the, uh, the goal of timing in the sport of swimming. And that's usually related to your arms in relation to your legs, and probably more important, the timing of your breathing. And then step number four is stroke efficiency, actually pulling more water, or getting more out of the, the things that move you through the water, namely your toe or your kick. So those are the four steps that we will follow as we build proper technique. Before we actually get into the four competitive strokes, we actually have to back up even further than that and talk about the foundations of our sport and what it means to be a swimmer. As swimmers, we need to first learn how to just be in the water how to breathe in the water, and how to manipulate the water. So we have several drills that we use to work on just the, the really the foundations of, of what it is to be a swimmer, and that is just being comfortable in the water. When we talk about how to be in the water, what we're referring to is how you hold your body in the water. As we said earlier, your body is a boat. You want to make your body the most efficient boat possible. One of the things that we need to do is we need to connect our body. We need to connect the muscles of our body so that we're not loose in the water. To do that, we have to engage all the muscles of our core to hold our body in line. When you see what I'm doing right now, See how loose she is right there. Hands to the side. Now hold some tension. Okay, there we go. That's body tension. Okay, so you want to be able to lock all your muscles so that your body is one unit in the water. We have several drills that we use. 
to kind of emphasize uh, that that core body tension to generate the body position that we're looking for to find the best way to move through the rock. Here are some of the drills that we use. Our first drill is soldier position bombs. Our focus is to maintain core tension when our body is tight and our we're connected, our upper and lower bodies are connected, and maintaining alignment so that our ears are over our shoulders, shoulders over the hips, hips over the knees as we bounce up and down. Okay, we progress into a half streamlined drill where we're visualizing a line going up our body, up the center line of our body, through our head and extending all the way up to our fingertips, all the while maintaining that same core tension and alignment. The next drill is called the Rolly Pulley Bug Floating Drill. We start out in a ball float and we allow our body to find the best position for it to float in, find the equilibrium point. Some people will float their shoulders a little higher, others will, others will float with their back a little flatter. And then we slowly extend into a streamlined position with our body as flat as possible on the surface of the water. The next drill is called the pencil float, and this is exactly what it exactly what it sounds like. We're floating vertically, thinking about our body alignment and holding core tension. We'll then progress this drill into a drill where we're actually moving forward, adding our kicking, moving forward through the water, maintaining core tension and being aware of our a neutral head position, uh, and flat body position. We'll do this drill with our hands at our side, with one hand out front in a half streamlined position, uh, and we'll do it on our front and on our back, all the while working on good body alignment, good body position as we move through the water like a boat. Although there is a, a breath holding component in our sport, one of the things that we have to learn early on is how to breathe in the water. If you were playing basketball and you were running up and down the basketball court and your coach was yelling at you, hold your breath, hold your breath, and you'd think he was crazy. Plus, you'd probably pass out. Uh, the same is true in our sport. In order to be able to perform, you need to get oxygen to your muscles. So, we're not big proponents of the old no breather in swimming. We think it's much more important at a young age to learn how to breathe properly uh, within your stroke and to learn how to just breathe in the water. The goal is to maintain as normal a breathing cycle as possible. Kind of like Justin's doing right here. Exhaling underwater, getting a good breath when he's out of the water and back down. Again, maintaining just a normal breathing cycle. Once you're able to do that in a relaxed fashion, it should not be too difficult to tuck that into your stroke so that your breath does not interrupt your stroke. The first racing skill that we're going to talk about is streamlining. Streamlining is probably the easiest skill you can do in this sport of swimming, yet it's the most important skill. If you look at all the best swimmers in the world right now, they are the ones that are the best underwater swimmers. So that's the first skill we'll be working on, the ready position and the streamer. Please watch as we demonstrate some proper streamlining mechanics. And go. So these skills and more will be the focus of the first week of our clinic program. I hope you enjoyed uh, the first installment of our video presentations, and we look forward to seeing you all at the pool very soon.